Hey guys, even here, so we have a couple of very interesting topics for this video, but we'll start with this one. What the hell is going on with Steve Kuklo? Is he gonna keep competing this year? Is he gonna try to qualify for the Mr. Olympia? Or is this competitive season for him done after he plays third at Texas, where he expected, obviously, to win and to qualify for the Mr. Olympia? He didn't do that. But what is his plan right now? Is he gonna keep competing and trying to qualify? Because what is the alternative for him at this point, really? He is a veteran of the sport, he is not a youngster, so if he decided to compete next year, he probably wouldn't make any progress. He really wanted, he tried to win that Texas Pro, obviously he wasn't even close to winning it, he was third. Last year he was much closer, but still he didn't do it. So, this is the second year in a row that he loses that show that he wants to win, which is also his hometown show, so to say, because he's from Texas, most of the audience is from Texas, and most of them are fans of Steve Kuklo, and that's basically why he really wants that show, but he failed, obviously. So I'm really wondering what is his plan for now. As you can see in the comments, I asked him a question. This is not the first time I asked him and he doesn't want to reply. He doesn't want to say what are his plans. Because once again, if he decides to compete again this year, he might get a Mr. Olympia qualification by winning one of the weaker, smaller shows. I think he can do that. I mean, he was third after an amazing Andrew Jack and also an amazing Martin Fitzwater. So there are other shows that are much weaker lineups than that Texas. So he can probably win a Mr. Olympia qualification and get to that stage this year. Because if he doesn't do that, what is the alternative, really? Compete at Texas next year again and potentially lose a third time in a row and not get a Mr. Olympic qualification? I don't think he's willing to do that. I don't think he's willing to risk it. I think he's either gonna try to win the Mr. Olympic qualification this year by winning one of the smaller shows or he's simply going to retire. I don't think he ever mentioned anything about retiring, but he also never mentioned anything about his future plans. He failed two times in a row, two years in a row to win a freaking show that he wants to win his hometown show and uh, now at this point I don't think his career is going to progress much I think from now on he's probably gonna go lower and lower so maybe this would be a good time strategically for him to retire if he doesn't have the desire to compete anymore because I don't see him progressing any further if he still loves competing and he has benefits from doing shows then sure he should continue but I don't know, what are the plans? What's the next show he's gonna do? Is he gonna compete again this year or next year? As far as his conditioning right now, based on this photo, he looks like he's in condition. I think he can do another show this year easily if he wants to. But I don't know what his plans are for this competitive season, for this year or for the upcoming years. If you guys have any insight or you have your own opinion, tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, next we have Brandon Harding, a couple of days out of his next show. You notice that I'm talking about him a little bit more frequently lately, and that is simply because I really like his passion. You know, he's not a professional bodybuilder, obviously. He's chasing that pro card. So, he doesn't really get anything from competing. He does it just from the pure love for it. And that's just very exciting for me, because pros... There is a chance, there is a big possibility that some of them, maybe even most of them, are doing bodybuilding. They still keep competing because they benefit largely from it. They have sponsors, they win prize money, their popularity rises every show they do. So they are definitely benefiting from competing way more than this guy, for example. I mean, his popularity also rises when he competes because he has a very popular YouTube channel. But really, he doesn't really benefit that much. He does this, obviously. It's quite obvious that he's doing bodybuilding because of pure passion, pure love for bodybuilding. And also, he is very close to getting that pro card. It's not like he's top 10 at these shows. No, he's usually like, he wins his class. He does, sometimes he wins the overall, sometimes he doesn't. He's like top 2. You know, he's very close to winning that pro card. So that makes it even more exciting because he's on a verge of winning it. And I think he's going to do it. I think a lot of people would say so. I think a lot of people see this guy as somebody who has a lot of potential, a, a lot of talent for classic physique. And I think it's only a matter of time when he's going to win that pro card. And he's very open. He's very transparent about his prep. He talks about his gear use and everything like that. And there is another thing why I find him very interesting. It's because him and I, we are at about similar level as far as muscularity. Like we are about the same height and about the same weight. 
obviously he's much better for classic physique he's way more successful i never did an npc show i never tried to win a pro card i have no idea where i would play so i'm not comparing himself his physique to mine i'm just saying we are on a similar level and also the cycles that he's doing i'm pretty much doing the same thing similar things so i can identify with this guy a lot and again he's he's recording his journey he has a lot of potential and that's why i'm interested in his career and why i enjoy talking about him i hope you guys are interested in that as well because currently i enjoy more talking about him for example than some of the other top pros now he posted these new physique updates the last show he did he won his class but not the overall and now the next show that he's gonna do is the show where he can win a pro card and he said that his plan was to come in better improved and as the shows go on he plans on doing more shows he's gonna be better and better each show and i think he's doing exactly that i think this time around his conditioning is improved and not just his conditioning his hardness and fullness definitely improved he got more condition he's definitely leaner but as you can see he looks harder he looks bigger and the question is how did he achieve this in only about a week he got a lot leaner and a lot harder now of course when you get conditioned when you are more conditioned you do look bigger and harder that that's true but i think he did something else i don't know how honest really he is about his cycle from my experience everybody says they are using less than they are at least a little or they avoid mentioning some of the things that they're using so there are other hardening agents that he didn't mention in his videos and i'm guessing he probably included them now after he did that show now that he's doing a more important harder bigger show he probably started doing some things some other things that he didn't do before in one of his videos he said that his body doesn't really agree with trend he has bad side effects from it so i'm guessing he didn't do trend for this show but maybe he did something like halo or something like that i don't know whatever he did it worked out he definitely does look harder leaner and drier take a look at the back pose as well especially in the glutes and hamstrings you can see that he improved his conditioning and also the back itself especially the lower back you can see he has a proper christmas tree his conditioning could be even better and i'm sure it's going to improve for the next show if he doesn't win a pro card at this show but i feel like he has a good chance of actually winning this show and getting that pro card because he looks improved he definitely does look more conditioned again drier harder fuller better as you can see in the caption he is definitely lighter right now than he was at the, at the previous show right now his new low weight is 209 and he still has a couple of days before the show so i'm guessing he's gonna probably drop like another pound or so so let's just round it at like 209 and his previous show was 213 so he lost four pounds in that one week while in the process he got uh, bigger and harder so in one week he lost four pounds which i think is great i think that's exactly how much he needed to lose in order to be in good conditioning can he get even more conditioned maybe he can lose another two pounds tops and i wouldn't go lower than that i think it would sacrifice his fullness and maybe like he's gonna probably he's probably gonna up the doses at least of orals and stuff like that so he's probably gonna get more conditioned and just bigger harder and drier and i think every show he does i think he has like a room for a couple of more shows to improve and get better and i think eventually at the end of this competitive season he will win that pro card so realistically how much did he progress from last year i think last year he was like 203 now he's gonna be probably like 206 7 so he did gain like i don't know four or five pounds which as i said in my previous video is realistic it's okay it's not crazy it's not horrible it's just fine you know it's a fine progress at least he's making progress you know four pounds of muscle five pounds let's say five pounds of muscle go and buy five pounds of meat and see how much meat that actually is if you make that much meat on your body in a year that's a good progress and like if you compare that progress to the progress of open pros most of them are actually not making much more than that in a year the difference is 
Some of them are already huge when they first start competing. Like, for example, Ian Valier at his first show ever when he was a teen, basically, he was 200 pounds shredded. And so over the years, he added like four or five pounds every year, and now he's as big as he is. And so most of them are really big naturally before they start doing anything. When they do their first cycle, they grow a lot more. And some of them like make huge leaps in, you know, in one year. You know, some of them like gain... I don't know, 20 pounds of muscle, it happens, but those are the freaks. For people with normal average genetics, or just a little bit over average, like Brandon here, like most of you probably, adding 5 pounds of muscle a year is, is a great progress. I mean, it is a progress. Most people don't even make progress, ever. So if you make that kind of progress, that's a good achievement. Anyways, Brandon Harding right now looks better than the last week. He improved. Do you guys think he can win the pro card at this upcoming show that he's going to do this weekend? Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. But as soon as the show happens and I know the results, I'm going to talk about that. So if you guys want to hear more about that, subscribe to this channel. All right, next we have Chris Bumstead. And no, it's not a physique update, but there is something I wanted to talk to you guys about. I found this very interesting. So there are a couple of photos of him. But this one, the first one, looks really impressive. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys about Chris Bumstead's cycle, really. Because as you guys know, you probably heard it. You probably heard him speak about this. What he's saying, basically, is that throughout his entire offseason, he goes from using absolutely nothing to using, like, 250 milligrams of testosterone up to maybe, like, 500 mg, and that's it. And for prep, what he's doing for prep, we don't know, but he would probably say that he's not doing much more than that. Does person look like this? Does one have this kind of fullness, this kind of roundness, this kind of hardness without using a bit more than that, at least? I doubt that, honestly. I mean, I know Chris has crazy genetics, but he doesn't have, like, Nick Walker genetics. He has good genetics for a classy guy. He doesn't have crazy genetics for an open bodybuilder. So I honestly doubt what he's saying is true. I honestly can't really believe it. You can listen to what Brandon Harding is doing. And that guy obviously has decent genetics. And his fullness, his hardness, his roundness, he doesn't get any close. Any close to Chris Bumstead's, as for right now. And they're, I think they're about the same age. I mean, Chris is... Chris is very young, he's my age, I'm 26, I think he's like 27, he turned 27 I think this year, so he's a young guy, and for a young guy like that, could he have this kind of look without using a lot of gear, I don't know, whatever you guys tell, you can tell me, but me personally, I doubt that, I doubt it, again, you can listen to what Brandon Harding is doing, what he's using, and it's a lot of compounds, it's not really high in dosage, but honestly, from what I know, and I know a lot of competitors, a lot, and I speak to them on a daily basis, and I know what most people are taking, and what Brandon Harding is doing is, let's say, average, it's not, it's not exactly super low, I know guys who do much less, but I know guys that do much more, so what he's doing is, like, pretty average, and Chris is saying that he's doing, like, I don't know, a fifth of what Brandon Harding is doing. Can you believe that? Can you buy that? Me personally, no way. I do not. I think he's not telling the truth. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. But uh, I just have to say, I think he's lying. Oh yeah, we also got a physique update. I hope it's recent. I'm not sure. Of Brandon Curry. He didn't specify whether this photo is uh, right now or it's a throwback. I, I'm not sure if it is recent because he does look very good in it. And why I'm thinking it's recent is because, of course, he posted it right now, but also because he's wearing a t-shirt of his current sponsor. And also because he is in Kuwait, in Oxygen Gym right now, and he is prepping for the Mr. Olympia. Throughout the year, Brandon usually stays home in America, where he's from, and when he starts prepping for shows, he goes to Kuwait, where his coach is, where his gym is, that's where he preps. And that's basically the only time he trains really, really hard, and he looks the best when he's in Kuwait. So that's why I'm assuming this is recent. Now, it is kind of stupid for him to post a physique update with his, uh, with his, with his glasses emoji 
after he has been absent for a long time he didn't really give us any physique updates and the first one is with his stupid glasses so i don't know how i feel about that i mean it's not really a physique update he isn't really showing us much of his physique he's only showing us his arms and his shoulders which we know are some of his best body parts but you can see the conditioning you can see the thinness of the skin you can see the hardness and if this is recent he looks phenomenal right now but I'm guessing he has probably too much separation in his shoulders for this to be recent. This kind of looks like a couple of weeks out of Mr. Olympia, but who knows. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.